Our next speaker is Andrew Wiley. He'll be speaking for 12 to 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. Up to 15 20. to 20. 15 to 20. Oh, it says 12 to 15 here. Mm -hmm. Okay. So he's going 15 to 20, no time limit. Andre is quoting as saying, in the mental institution, never let them see you cry. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> to walk through fire and glass, you have to be a little crazy. Andre has been at that low point in his life that everyone is afraid of. When you are chasing your fears away, having experience eliminating the fear at the service source makes the one-eyed man the king of the land of the blind. Achieve a new outlook on burning situations today. Sit up, shoulders back, prepare to hear the speech say, saving information from the source that has turned his daydreams into his daily grind. Here is Andre Wise speaking out of the professional speaker book, Project 2, Speaking to Entertain, entitled, The No Fear Speech Technique. Come on up, Andre. <laughs> Who here today got up, washed all that curled out of their eyes, went to the mirror in the bathroom and said, I am a handsome devil. <laughs> all right, my hands got two of us, that's it? You don't look in the mirror and say, Why not? If you don't do it, who's going to do it? <laughs> so, let me get this straight. You all start your day without giving yourself a compliment? Not until I have my coffee. <laughs> <laughs> well, how are you supposed to give other people compliments? Heartfelt, from the heart, real compliments if you don't start by giving yourself those. My puppy does. <laughs> Dog will love you no matter what as long as you keep that kibble coming and the head scraps along the way, right? But isn't it funny, from you saying that, isn't it funny how we sort of live our lives like that too? If, but well, let me start by saying this. Back in the day, I worked in restaurants, not because I liked it, but because they were giving me that kid and a few table scraps along the way. So I kept doing it and kept doing it, even though I knew I didn't like it. But why do we do the things that we don't like to do more often than the things that we do like to do? You like getting that paycheck for the security of knowing that you can pay for the things that you enjoy, roof over your head, food in your stomach. What happens if that security is gone? What's the one thing that replaces that security? We're all afraid of something, whether you like to admit it or not, and that fear is what's driving that car in a lot of situations. Today, I'm going to change that for you. Just a little bit, about 1%. Just a tweak of the dial, just ever so slightly. Because if we try to create massive change all at once, what happens? If you come in and somebody comes and says, I want to lose weight, and you say, Great, we're gonna do all of your workouts in one week for the entire year so you can get it out of the way. <laughs> are they gonna say, yeah, let's take on that massive change? Or are they gonna say, thank you, Mr. Crazy, I'll go down to Planet Fitness for $10 a month. Massive change is scary. It's fear to try to change massively at one point in time. That invokes that, that neurological system that says, I can't, I won't, I shouldn't, I, I couldn't. 
instead of looking at surefire techniques that will change us just ever so slightly that we can incorporate in our daily lives just a minute or two at a time in order to better ourselves over the course of a lifetime, a lot of times we want to wait until the beginning of the year and say, okay, now my resolution is I'm going to lose this 10 pounds. I'm going to read a book in a month. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And we say, I'm going to, or I'm going to plan to, instead of I am blank. I am going to wake up every day and know that I am the most beautiful person in the world because you're a product of your mother and she's the most beautiful person in the world. <laughs> if that's all somebody needs is an excuse, give yourself the best excuse that you possibly can to say, I am. Right at the beginning of the day, right when you're fresh, maybe from getting a good night's sleep, Maybe we should preface it with that. First off, get a good night's sleep. Don't wait until midnight, one o'clock, when you know you have to get up at five because you're not going to get a good night's sleep. Then you probably are going to lie to yourself in the mirror and say, oh, I'm the best looking guy on the face of the earth. Uh, no, what you wanna do is get yourself prepared with the training that will let you continue on making that 1% dial change in your life and then use it as much, as, as much and as often as possible. You get up in the morning from a good night's sleep, look yourself in the mirror and say, I love you. How much of an impact could that make on your day? Maybe it's more of an impact than not saying I love you to yourself in the mirror. Are you doing the world a favor? Sure. You're making one person feel a little bit better about themselves. And if you can make one person feel a little bit better about yourself, then maybe you can make two people feel a little bit better about themselves. After a while, you get good at that, maybe you can make for people feel better about themselves. As a firefighter, I learned how to train effectively using common techniques that are transferable into daily life all the time. Because, and this has happened to me on three occasions, there may be a time when you don't have your uniform on, yet you're still called to action. For instance, Two years ago on JTB, I saw a car turn, flip over, do about five flips, and end up in a ditch. I'm not on duty, so I keep driving, right? No. <laughs> Immediately slam on the brakes, boom, go into action. I do have vinyl gloves in my trunk, put those on, ran into action, no questions asked. Why? I was trained. To do that. It wasn't even a thought in my mind, it was instant, an instantaneous reaction that made me go and help save two lives that day. Training is what firefighters, EMS, police officers, soldiers, anybody who is a, a responder, when one of those responder type careers, they train themselves to respond appropriately. To be able to become a better you, you need to train yourself in order to respond appropriately in any given task, in any given situation, at any moment in time. If somebody knows you're in Toastmasters and they need some help because their boss said that you have to give a presentation, they're going to come to you. Who, who here has been tapped to do that? If you have, say I am. If you're the person that somebody goes to when somebody asks 
for advice on speaking or communicating, raise your hand and say, I am. That's the first step in training. Not being that person, being able to raise your hand and say, I am. Because if you can't honestly do that, then you're not training yourself properly to be effective for other people. We've heard it multiple times today, Toastmasters, where leaders are made. I have also been made a leader thanks to Toastmasters. Before Toastmasters, I would run away from leadership. I wanted the position, I didn't want the responsibility. <laughs> Somebody's tracking that right now, raise your hand high and say, I am. Come on now. I wanted the position, I wanted the power, I wanted the glory. Did not want the responsibility. Still does. Some of us still don't. Because we have been trained to say that we're taking responsibility and saying I am is hard and dangerous and you need to be an expert in order to do it. Let me tell you something about experts, just real quick story. There was a company called named Odeo, had 10 or so investors, all invest $100,000. Expert investors, they know the ins and outs of business. They know a good, bad, and indifferent deal. The creator, the owner of Odeo, they started working on a little side project and decided this side project would be better than the whole project. So they did what nobody has ever done before in business, and they went back to the investors and said, look, we are going to give you an option. Option A, I give you back your $100,000, you go on with your life as you see fit. Which is a great deal for an investor because a lot of times they will lose that $100,000 before they ever see a return on it. Option B, we take all of your $100,000 and put it into this side project that you barely know anything about. We will inform you, we will bring you into it, and we really want you to put that money into this investment because we feel this is the wave of the future. 10 out of 10 experts pulled their money out of Odeo, which was fine. But those experts missed out on close to a billion dollars when Odeo went and turned themselves into Twitter. But they're the experts, they know. If you're waiting to become an expert and somebody to call you an expert, you might as well keep waiting because nobody will ever give you that title. You have to grasp that title. And let me tell you what you are an expert in. You are an expert in being yourself. So don't worry about the title. What you need to worry about is how to take that title that you give yourself and become the best at it that you can with the training that you know can give you the best outcome. When we're going to speak, it can be nerve wracking, to say the least. It can be a challenge on our nervous system. However, I have learned a technique that we can all learn today, right now, to train ourselves to move that dial 1% and make us that much better. And here it is. Uh, I'm, Amanda, I want you to come up here. And I'm sorry, I swear, I'm not doing this on purpose. And when he did this, I was like, oh, should I do this or not? But you'll see why in just a minute. You, I, you will totally understand why I picked her specifically. Everybody welcome to Amanda. Master out on 210 at the last contest that I went to, correct? You were like a contest master or something? Yeah, you <laughs> contest master before, correct? Oh, wow. oh wow. it's really good to meet you. I'm, I'm Andre. I am also going to be a contest master. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I'm really nervous about it, though. Uh, you know, I, I just, can you give me some pointers or something? 
one day soon about how to do this because I, I honestly don't know how to do it at all. And you look pretty natural on stage doing that. So could you could you maybe sit down with me for five minutes Absolutely. later? Really? Yes. You would do that for me? I would. Really? Yes. I mean, I, I don't want to take any anything off. It's no problem. I would love to help you. Really? That's correct. Wow. Thank you. You're very welcome. Oh. See, give Amanda. <laughs> I did that to your sister. I came up to her and said, hey, how are you? I, I, I really enjoyed your speeches the other day. And she was like, hmm, what? No, <laughs> because Amanda, if you don't know, has a twin sister who works at Mayo Clinic. And I happened to run into her. And I'm like, hey, what's up? And, and she's the one that's not in Toastmasters. Oh my. So I want you to, and, 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 and we'll, this is all gonna come back around here in a little bit. Okay, so I want you to do this. I know you're a popular person. You're a Toastmaster. Yes. But today, just for a little bit, we're going to turn into a not as confident person. So I want you to kind of bend your knees a little bit, Slouch your shoulders, a little more slouch. You're, you're not as happy. Okay. Put your head down a little bit. All right. Now, when I come up to you and say, Hi, am I? How, how, how are you? I'm good. I, I remember seeing you at Toastmasters. Is, is, are, did I see you at Toastmasters? I'm not sure if you did. I don't know if, if I was there. That's exactly how that conversation went. I knew she could do it. I knew she could do it. <laughs> Physiology is everything. Toastmasters, I knew instantly something was off when I came up to Amanda. <laughs> and she was, uh, I don't think, and she literally said, I don't think that you saw me there. She said, you might have seen my sister. And I said, you have a twin sister? <laughs> and you don't really run into that. that. I mean, that's a small world right there. One in Toastmasters, confident, leading a contest. She has to volunteer, to, or volatile, depending on which, <laughs> which Toastmasters club you're in. She is the polar opposite in terms of communication. They're both beautiful young ladies, don't get me wrong, they both, they both have that, their own personalities, but you can tell that one practices, she trains herself as much as she can to be that versus being, I will leave you with this, and this will be our conclusion for the day. Every time I speak, I acknowledge the part of me that is fear, doubt, disbelief, angst, because I was Baker active for 72 hours with clinical depression and anxiety. I got over that with this one technique when it comes to public speaking. I'll get in the state, I call it getting in the state, by slumping and getting going there, getting myself back to that depressed state by slumping my shoulders. And I'll do this in the mirror and putting my head down, bringing down my voice, all the things that happen naturally when you keep thinking about the past and make it your present. And I will acknowledge what that Andre looks like. And I will address that Andre. I say, hey, Andre. It's like, I, I say, well, what's wrong? <laughs> and then Andre say, life. I say, okay, well, Andre, we're about to go on stage and give everybody the talk of our lives. Do you, you want to go up there with me and hang out? No, no, I, I, I couldn't do that. 
I, I, I'm just not made for that. I said, okay, that's fine. How about I leave you here behind the stage, behind the well, backstage where it's nice and safe, and I'll go out there in front of all the scary people. And then I let that part of me say, okay, that, that's, a, that's a good deal. You go out there and deal with that. I'm just going to. So I don't have to worry about where my fear, my disbelief, my angst, where that is, because I know where it is. It's backstage. So I can bring out the tools that I need without any of the confusion of having all those distractions with me. They're with me, but they're not with me. You see how that can help us as Toastmasters? It's training. You have to be able to get up in the morning and say, I am, which by the way, the words I am automatically make you smile. They train you to be a more pleasant personality. Try saying I am at least once in the day. You don't, nobody ever has to hear you. They can still think that you're part of the sheeple crowd. Just say it to yourself. Just say it in the mirror. Say I am and watch your face turn into a totally different person. Watch your personality evolve when you start telling yourself week after week after week, month after month after month. You don't have to tell anyone. 